What's up you amazing hacker, hope you're doing well today. You and I, we need to have a talk. We need to talk about the great bug bounty firewall. I think it's an obstacle that every single bug bounty hunter goes through when they first want to start and we need to explore it a little bit, so let's go. But first of all, I want to advertise a little bit. Let's say I have a new service. You guys can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me for like one hour and it's $30. You can Twitter DM me on Twitter or you can have one on one conversation with me for 15 minutes and ask a couple of questions for $10. Now, why do I do this? Because I have so many requests, it's getting impossible to handle them all and I really want to help you guys, but I need to prioritize a little bit and you're, if you have a question, feel free to pose it. I will probably read it and I will do my best to answer it, but I cannot guarantee you that you will get an answer. The best guarantee I can give you is to go to my Discord and ask it there because there are a lot of competent people like me ready to answer your question and even more competent people than me. So let's go, shall we? The Great Bug Bounty Firewall, it's really something that, in my opinion, every single bug bounty hunter goes through when you first start. And it's like this great obstacle in terms of like you're going to have some trouble with your first reports and the first vulnerabilities that you're going to find everything is going to look like a shiny thing to you so say for example you are completely new to bug bounty hunting the first couple of reports you're going to write are going to be crap let's get down to business no bullshit they're going to be crap my first reports were crap i think still my reports are a little bit crap i have some room for improvement that's for sure but I reported some horrible things and I'm going to tell you guys something that I'm a bit embarrassed about, but it's okay, everybody makes these mistakes. And that's why I want to talk about it to you guys openly. Everybody makes these mistakes, so you shouldn't be ashamed. Everybody starts from somewhere. We all start from zero. So the first reports that I wrote, they were really stupid because, um, as you guys know, you have IDORs. IDORs uh, stem from sequential IDs. Um, that makes their impact a lot higher. So I was like, you should never have sequential IDs. And I reported that. Now a sequential ID is like one, two, three, four, etc. So they reported that. And the triager was like, I don't think this is a valid bug. So he closed my report and I was really, really angry. And I was like, this really is a valid report because I've seen pen testers at my company and they report that kind of stuff as a medium impact, sometimes even as a high impact. So why is this not valid? But of course, obviously it's not a valid assumption. It's not valid to do that because when you have proper authorization on that endpoint, um, sometimes you can have some sequential IDs that are necessary because they are readable by everybody. All that kind of stuff is possible. So you really have to look at the impact. Now, these first few reports that I wrote, I got a negative reputation on Hacker One. I reported five reports. One of them was a duplicate. Four of them were crap reports, like I just told you guys about, like missing HTTP only uh, flags on the cookies, that kind of stuff. Um, I reported some CSRF token missing on login functionality. Um, all the stuff that Burp was reporting to me, and especially since I have Burp Pro, I use the Active Scanner, and the Active Scanner was reporting quite a lot of crap, you know, just false positives, CSRF tokens missing on login forms, on logout forms. I would report all of that and would think, oh my god, bug bounty hunting is so easy because so many companies have all of these vulnerabilities that I can easily report, but that's not true because uh, of course I was disappointed for those vulnerabilities not being true, but it kind of gave me this, this, um, this fire inside of me to actually find something that was true and something that was impactful. So I went looking and I went to integrity because HackerOne had my negative reputation there and I had to wait for 30 days before I could report anything else. So I just went on to integrity, checked it out there and I'm really glad I found that platform because I stayed there. But also I changed my mentality when I went on the platform. I went from, oh my God, I have to report everything to let's think about what's impactful and what's not. And I still make a lot of mistakes doing that because determining impact is something that's really hard. You're going to have to be able to imagine that you're the company and some hacker is going to come to you and he's going to attack you in the way that you just found your vulnerability. 
And then you're going to have to think, okay, how much damage does this do to me? To be able to know how much damage something like that does, you need to be able to know all of your costs, all of your expenses, all of that stuff. So determining impact is really hard. You need to know business processes. <clears throat> but one thing I want to give you guys is just don't give up. Make sure that you find impactful bugs. Make sure that you think about your impact. Don't report crap. It's hard to know what's crap and what's not, especially in the beginning if you're just getting started. Um, but everybody does it, you know. I, I've seen countless bug bounty hunters. Their first reports weren't good. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, it's living and learning is what I always say. Those are the two things that everybody does for sure. Now, um, one thing I want to ask from you guys is what were your first crap reports? What were your reports that you wrote that weren't really good? So um, put that in the comments below. If you like this video, you know what to do and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody.